Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. How are you doing, John? Hey, Art. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, today's another special day. I love our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega, because she talks about stuff that's really important to people. Well, let's see if she's, uh, let's relationships. See if she, let's see if she's there. <laughs> hi, hi, Michelle. Hello. Uh, how's it, Michelle, how's it feel to have us talking about you off camera? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here listening. Yeah, good. good to see you again. What? So what, and now you deal with, you have clients uh, all the time, and then you do videos for us, and uh, what kinds of, what's the most important that you're dealing with these days that, that uh, that's common to, to most of us? Well, I mean, I would say divorce, getting over a divorce is one of those things that um, can be a real challenge for people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It's it's painful. Divorces are painful for everybody, children, spouses, um, family members. Nobody knows what to do. So what, are the, yeah. what are the key things that you do to uh, help people either reconcile or get the uh, help them move on? I guess there, yeah. there are two parts of the story because uh, right, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I really, I mean, I'm, I like to consider myself a champion for relationships. So I do really try. If people are willing, I really try to help them see how they can improve things. And often there are some, there's a lot of low hanging fruit to improve in your communication and the, the, the ways that you want to get along with each other. And then sometimes it's more challenging issues. But there is a point where you know a couple does decide, or at least or one person decides that, you know they're ready to move on. Yeah. So it, w let's assume for a second that the divorce is done. Okay. Um, yeah. It, you know, dealing with it, it, it lingers. It's a pain that lingers for, for years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what this means really is that, you know, if it, if you're not, if it, you're still thinking about it, if it hangs heavy, that it's still impacting your life now. And um, sometimes in small and not so small ways. Sometimes we want to rush to move on and like put it behind us. And, and that can be good in some ways, but often we're still holding energy around it and uh, we're, or we're blaming the other person or, um, you know, we're not seeing our part in it. So I, I yeah, I, I think that'd be a great topic to get into today. Uh, please do. Uh, let's start with the fact that, uh, you know, from my experience, those people that I know that have um, been divorced, it's never a simple solution. It's never. Um, it's never. A, you did this, you know. It's. It's always a complicated relationship problem. The, who did what to whom, and that's why I think it's so painful for people. So wh where do you begin? Let's assume your divorce is is over and you're still having trouble dealing with it. I, I don't mean a recent divorce. I mean you know the the pain lingers on. Right. Um, what's the first thing you do? Yeah, well, the first thing is to really notice that, wow, this is still impacting me. And sometimes we just sort of like, oh, yeah, that's just to be expected or that's just the way it is. But you know what? It, it doesn't have to be that way. So the fact that it's still in your field, then that's something to attend to, right? So that's kind of the awareness is really the first step. And I like to say dive right in with forgive your for former partner. And obviously, this is simple, but not easy. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess also so, that uh, that uh, your approaches might have to be different now that the divorce is final and, and the people are not getting back together, or uh, they've made that commitment to to uh, be divorced. Is there must be a difference between uh, having children involved and not? Because in theory, with children involved, you're going to see each other on various occasions. Whereas if you don't have any children involved, you might just be at the point where you just never see them again. And I guess that's okay. Uh, that's probably easier to deal with. Well, maybe not. Well, yes and no. I mean, I, you're right. There are different, there, I mean, so many different situations in this, right? But I would say that if you, even if you don't see your partner anymore, your former partner, there's still going to, there might be still an impact that it's having on you and, and not a positive one, let's say, right? Like, but when I talk about forgiveness, it's really about, um, you know, we might be thinking, oh gosh, I was so hurt by this. I felt betrayed. I'm angry. Um, and it's not easy to forgive, but you know, I, I like to remind people that forgiveness is a choice and we do it for our benefit, right? 
We do it because if we don't forgive, then we're basically holding a grudge. We're feeling resentment on an ongoing basis. So would it be fair to say that it's not so much, uh, 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 let's say there are no kids involved to forgive, but to just let it go. So in other words, if you don't let it go, then it's going to keep eating at you. If you let it go, uh, you can move on. Well, right. that's, isn't, isn't that part of what forgiveness is all about? Is when you forgive somebody, um, you're letting it go. You're not necessarily forgetting. It's there. It'll always be there. It's a fact of life. But you're, you're, by forgiving, you're letting it go. Is that correct? Right, right. I mean, there's a quote out there, you know, resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die, right? <laughs> so if, <laughs> you might have heard that. But so basically, if we're holding that level of intensity and, you know, resentment, hate or whatever, that's a lot of, that's a strong level of engagement. And that is going to be impacting us. So we're giving this energy to this experience in our past. And um, it's going to impact us now. So the main thing is to just, you know, when we blame another as well, we are basically saying that we are a victim to the circumstances. We're at the effect of what that person did to us. And that doesn't help us really take ownership and, and, and move on, really. So, um, yeah, I, I like to, it's kind of a practice, right, to forgive. You might like something comes up in your mind and, oh, wow, that happened. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm choosing to let this go. It is what it is. And, um, and it's not easy, but it's kind of a, it's something to attend to on a regular basis as any ill feeling come up. Yeah. Well, forgiveness, I think forgiveness is important in our lives, um, really for us, you know, th those who need, who give the forgiveness, those who forgive, <laughs> right. um, it's important, more important for us to forgive than for the person to be forgiven. Uh, because they may they may or may not care, quite frankly, <laughs> you know, when True. you forgive somebody. Uh, yeah. But it's really important for us. And as you point out, I love that quote, by the way. Uh, resentment is a poison. <laughs> you hope you take and you hope somebody else dies from it. That's great. You know, maybe we can do a whole other subject someday of uh, forgiveness versus letting it go. I think they're two different things. Yeah. Oh, really? It, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I also I, think that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Oh, I, I, no. I was just going to say uh, you started to say something about uh, ownership you, you, to own it, right. um, yeah. because as I pointed out, you know, divorces are complicated things, and you know, just like nobody walks away without getting hurt, nobody's innocent. I think so. If, owning it uh, is recognizing your part in it. Is it not? Yeah, and that brings us to the, to, the, to the next step I want to go into. But before we get there, I want to also um, remind us, thinking about this, is that to accept what happened and yes. forgive is not the same thing as condoning behavior, mm -hmm. right? So they might have done or said things that, whoa, you know, unacceptable in whatever way. However, we're just choosing to say, you know what, it happened, and um, I, I want to forgive it for my own, you know, freedom, basically, Good point. Good point. Okay, so uh, so this is almost seems like part one. Yeah. Well, well I want to take some more time with taking stock in our own, like the ownership part. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to address that. I, I because taking ownership in something is very difficult. Um, it's admitting your own failure, you know. Well, and it, when when you think you're an aggrieved party, let's say you, your spouse has divorced you. And you're sitting here. Um, <laughs> my mother used to say, yeah, when you're when you're feeling down at the dump, she would she would say you're sitting in your garden, uh, moaning and eating worms or something. Like that. <laughs> it was a great description of feeling uh, depressed. But when you're the aggrieved party, you, it's hard for you to admit that you had a part in it. Right. Well, that's what I when I say when I talked about being like the evict being a feeling like you're a victim of circumstances or you're at the effect of something, then you're not looking at your own part in it. So and the reason we do that is not to, you know, beat ourselves up or anything and get down on ourselves, but to extract the learning. Like maybe there were things you saw early on in the relationship that you didn't pay attention to. Or maybe you tolerated behavior that really wasn't acceptable to you, but you allowed it to continue. And of course there might have been ways that you did things or said things that were hurtful 
or didn't do, didn't respond in ways that, you know, by, by being just turning the other way or being callous to some suffering that your partner might have been having. So it's very complex, right? These situations can be very complex, but it's good to look at it with curiosity and, and self-compassion. What was my part in here and how might I do that differently? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and the forgiving part, I think, is really important. So uh, recognizing it, uh, forgiving, and uh, I guess recognizing your own part in it, and forgiving yourself is, is another right. part of forgiving too. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So all good, uh, all good adv advice. Um, you know, sometimes a divorce is a um, uh, well, not sometimes, all the time. Divorce has a legal ramification, and some divorces are messier than others. And so sometimes you. Um, you might find your lawyer saying to you, uh, well, I, I think more like a traffic accident. You know, they, they say, don't admit anything wrong. Your insurance company says, don't admit you did anything wrong. <laughs> you know, and maybe are there circumstances where um, your divorce lawyer says, don't, don't make amends. Don't apologize. Don't yeah, forgive. Because it can, don't, hurt, it can hurt you in the proceedings. It's going to hurt your case. You're going to hurt your alimony. Right. You're going to hurt your whatever. It, it, does that, is that an aspect of what you're talking about? Yeah, or not? No, I think that's a really key point to bring up. And um, so what we talked about already is basically, you know, forgiving your former partner and then looking at what you, your part in it and what you can do. These are sort of things you do on your own, I would say. They're, they don't really involve your other partner. You're doing this for yourself. Mm -hmm. But the third step that I like to talk about is, is maybe it's, it's time to make amends in some way. And this is kind of a way to make peace with your former spouse. If if it's appropriate and if the right you know, circumstances, depending, you know, if you're in a, on, if you're in a divorce situation, maybe it's not quite the time, but it just depends on your circumstances and definitely get legal advice. Cause obviously I'm not um, a legal expert here, but it, it can help to soften the energy between you, especially if you have children together and you're still going to be in situations together. So, you know, it, it can be really, really healing for both of you and the whole family and, um, you know, to apologize so and to forgive and well, to, um, go ahead. Sorry. Well, what I think is really the most exciting thing about, uh, what you're talking about. And again, John and I suck at this because we both are married over 50 years. So what do we know? But we've well, seen wait that. a second. I'm sure you know things about apologizing, apologizing and forgiveness. Oh boy. No, no, John, oh. John doesn't. Oh, do I know okay. about apologizing? He, he just knows about it because he just assumes that he should apologize. <laughs> He's just not sure what he did wrong. But uh, in any event, uh, but we know plenty of uh, people who have been uh, uh, divorced. But I think the really important uh, takeaway from this is that while you can do couples counseling and things like that, uh, really probably the most important thing that I see from this is that you're giving people the opportunity to let, I call it, let it go or forgive so that you could deal with it having nothing to do with the partner. Sometimes it might involve uh, some conversation with the partner, but really uh, you're, you're the master of your own destiny. And so as bad as things are, you can let it go to give or get behind you, or I'd like to say, uh, see it in your rearview mirror. Uh, there's a great country and Western song about that. Uh, and uh, just move on with your life. So I think that that's an important takeaway uh, of all the things which is that you've been talking about, which is how people can adjust themselves into their life or lifestyle or situations and feel better about themselves and not let it control them, that they yeah. regain some control. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and all these things you've mentioned, if you can't do those, you can't really move on, can you? No, it can be, well, I mean, we all, it, it's sort of a different, it's kind of a loop back thing. Maybe you do some part of the work and then something comes up later that you remember or that you uh, suddenly, you know, you remember something that was challenging. But but what I want to really um, talk about as well, just to kind of complete this, this portion is just what is your intention for the future? And this is where I kind of like to encourage people to just take a stance or an out, outlook of goodwill and acceptance that you intend to treat this person, you know, in like publicly, you know, the, what you might say about them, what you might, the way you would treat them is just with goodwill and kindness. And, um, it, it feels actually really good if you can get to that place, because then you're just, there they are living their life. They're my children's, 
mother, father, and it's just, it can be so healing for you to just like hold them with high regard. It doesn't mean you have to hang out with them every day or anything. It just means that you hold them with, with high and with love really. And yet with some space properly. Sure. Good advice. Good advice. So you mentioned that this is a, a really big topic and there's a kind of a part two to this. Um, yeah. W give me a uh, give me a teaser. What is part two? Because we, we, we'll talk about that in the next video. Yeah, yeah. So it's really about so kind of first we're kind of cleaning up the past and what happened, what was, and then we're going to orient towards the future a little more. Like what can we do to 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 create our next phase, our next chapter? Good. The fu the future. That's that's important. That's important because I know a lot of people who go through a divorce they don't see a future. You know, they're they're stuck in the past. Really, they're stuck in the, mired in the pain of the past. Right, right. That's like, great. I, I yeah. look forward to uh, this. Will be very, very useful for a lot of people. I think. Okay, Michelle, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Uh, maybe pretty soon in part two. Yes, but before we let Michelle go, we need to remind people that they can see all of us on Celebrating Act Two on YouTube, and hopefully subscribe to YouTube. We'd love to have your subscribe be a subscriber join us yeah and share your comments too share your questions amen thank you michelle see you soon yeah for more on celebrating act two visit our webpage. follow us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and tell your friends celebrating act two is the user manual for the second half of your life